what caused it. The hurricane may have been natural. A warming ocean most certainly contributed to the force and intensity of that hurricane. So we see around the world all these uh, called typhoons on the other side in the Pacific, hurricanes in the Atlantic. Um, so you have all these other events. We're going to hit on some of these additional ones. This year, 2022, has been really hard. Um, I remember before the pandemic when we had Australian fires thinking, oh, that's really bad. And it just really seems to be now picking up speed and getting worse and worse. France got hit particularly hard. Europe, um, you can see 2021, that's what in July France will look like with the, the forest and grass cover. 2022, much more brown, a major drought. I try to make sure I hit every continent here. Iran, um, capital, in, was running out of water in April. Lake Al Sala in Iraq completely dried up. Well, not completely, there's a little bit of water in there. And you have to understand, this, not this like in particular, but some of the other ones, we have civilizations, cities, things, agriculture, depending on these, right? Um, indigenous populations. Nigeria, Africa, we had a flash flood from, they were like torrential rains that came in very quickly following dryness, so they, it flooded very quickly, killed 100 people, um, big problem. People are affected everywhere. India, this Asian continent, Nepal, Pakistan. Pakistan was at the beginning of the month. Um, with all these, we have 300 million displaced. In Pakistan alone, last month, they lost almost all of their agricultural products. They lost their acres of crop, two million acres gone. And then their heads of cattle, livestock, 700, almost 800,000 gone. And we almost aren't even talking about it anymore. This, I mean, that didn't happen, it went away, that's still there. In the Eastern world, we tend to have, in our coastal regions and areas where there is more flooding issues, we do have the poorer city dwellers bearing the brunt of these floods. In the U.S., we still have that happening in some areas. And when Katrina came in, um, the Fourth Parish, and came, that flooded, and that was uh, lower income housing that had a lot of our minority population there. Um, so it happens in the U.S. too. Wildfires, I mentioned Australia, U.S. is the same thing. Heat it up and it will burn, essentially. So just look at the amounts. Again, we have increase in forest fires. So I, I don't have to go, it's, it is what it is, it's there. Moving to the Great Lakes. We're getting closer to the kind of the, another physics part here. Um, lots of problems on the Great Lakes, tornadoes, we are seeing an increase in tornadoes, intensity, and touchdowns where they had not previously occurred as temperatures change and move northern. Our glaciers are melting, continental and latitude, uh, continental mountains. Every one of these comes with ecological and societal impact. The snow crabs, which if anyone likes seafood, this is a big loss. Um, the industry is collapsing, so we're seeing collapsing of agricultural land in the oceans and on land. This is a really cool map by Esri um, where you actually can click on an arrow and see sea level change. Around 90% of our urban expansion, so in our developing countries, are, we're having urban expansion. And it's happening a lot of the time in these urban areas that have a high hazard prone areas. Are we gonna rebuild in Fort Myers? Detroit, flooding is both a climate crisis and environmental justice. We are one of the poorest big cities in the country that has the most black residents of any of the major cities. It is increasingly being hit by extreme weather events associated with climate change that are impacting our most vulnerable residents. And these are not just flooding. We have dealt with increasing cold, increasing hot extremes in the last decade, coupled with our utility shutoffs that we're experiencing, frequent outages, creating dangerous conditions for its residents. We cannot have elderly people in homes without water and without air conditioning and without heat. Or young people, the elderly are pretty vulnerable. Um, combined heat waves and power outages continue to happen in Detroit, result in more fatalities than we saw in Hurricane Katrina. So we do have a problem here. So I wanted to leave with one glimmer of hope. And this comes from Florida. I just found this, threw it in there. There was this little community in Florida that was totally solar based. They were in Fort Myers, uh, not Fort, is it Fort Myers? 
not a moment. No. And they did not lose power. They sustained it well. So as we move towards sustainability, is what Green Street is focused on too, is that the ability to be resilient, the, the ability to come back. There are things we can do. One of well, this is not emitting CO2, I would say. Um, so it, one, is not emitting CO2 for the most part. And two, it was stained and kept a community powered through this event. And it did not sustain damage to the panels either. Um, so when we think of cities, and when we think of flooding, and when we think of what's going on, there are solutions. We just have to have everyone on board and moving towards them. And we will continue to face these impacts regardless um, for a time being, um, but there is potential and there, there is hope. So with that, I did want to move to the panel discussion. Um, again, Dr. Bill Schuster from uh, Civil and Environmental Engineering has done a lot of work with flooding in Detroit. Um, Yashun Huang has done a lot of air quality work, and Tam has more of the social aspect of it, also doing a lot with gerontology. So I'm very curious also, too, how climate impacts are differential on different populations of individuals, too. A lot about how different age groups are going to be hit. So I just did a project last summer on older, the older deteriorator's perspective on the changing natural environment. Um, so I think a lot in, and specifically about those issues of aging uh, with in terms of the digital divide. So if we, th and I think that's, maybe I jump. So if we think there could be emergencies there will be some people that are gonna get information quickly and know what to do with that information. And there will be others that will be left behind. So there's either information issues and flow. I actually spoke to Google Detroit about this yesterday. Like, not everyone's like downloading the app of anything, including me, because I'm not very good at it. Um, <laughs> then we have issues of the changing body. So your actual body and how when you age, you know, your ability to withstand extreme temperature changes physiologically. So I was just interviewed by the New York Times a week ago about what I thought about air conditioning units in, in future HUD building plans. And so it's interesting because um, I know that in Detroit, uh, we're gonna have this like program of resiliency hubs, but we also know that not everyone has transportation to get to these resiliency hubs to charge their iPhone, right? So this idea that for some people, leaving where they actually stay in an emergency or in a sort of, uh, is, is, is a very big issue. And then, so I wanted, and then the last thing is I really work on the issues of affordable housing. And I know people across the lifespan are worried about affordable housing. How many of you are worried about affordable housing, right? So when we think about, uh, I work a lot with older adults living in a lot of public housing in midtown, downtown, et cetera. And we think about those buildings are not equipped for our changing environment. So as we plan for dealing with an affordable housing crisis, we have to plan housing um, that will incorporate changes in, in climate. That's what I work on. <laughs>